have a prayer and go ahead and get into the word. We're going to be in the fourth chapter of Ecclesiastes, if you can find it. Of course, we've got scripture that uh, we'll put on the, on the screen. But I want us to go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for the rain. Thank you for the refreshing that comes with this time of year. And we thank you for the love that you have for us and how you care for us. No matter what is going on around us, you never fail. So I thank you for your love. I thank you for your mercy. And I just ask you that you today let your anointing be in our lives, flow through us, that we might be able to hear your voice, do what you tell us to do, and serve you faithfully. Help us to reach out and, and show others the love that you have for them by demonstrating the love that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. I titled this sermon, What a Friend. Now, y'all know the old, old hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. It, it really is, is true. But I've just wanted to talk about just the importance of friendship. As I think about some of the trying times that we've been going through recently with a lot of deaths and a lot of sickness and a lot of accidents and all sorts of things, it is just extremely reassuring to me that uh, I've got a church body that I know I can count on. Now, we can't change everything. There's a lot. As a, it's amazing what we can't do. But it's more amazing what he can. And so what I just deeply appreciate, and, and as I've shared with you often, the older I get, the more I understand that the most important thing I can do is pray. And we can, there's really power there. But we need to do it in faith. We need to do it based on the, the word of God. And nobody understands the Word of God completely, perfectly, except the one who wrote it, who is the Holy Spirit. That's why we need to hang out with uh, the one who wrote it as much as we can so that he can keep us straight on our doctrine. Amen? And I, but I just deeply appreciate the fact that when I've been in trouble or really needed uh, folks to stand with me, I've got a church that stands with me and friends outside of this church, other Christian believers that, that just stand. And friendship is just extremely important. Now, the most important friendship we have is with the Lord, and that's obvious, and I'll talk about that. But I just wanted to just thank the Lord for how we can rally around each other. When Bill had his accident, I went down to, to check on him. And it was funny what he said when I walked in. He, uh, <laughs> uh, Chris has already told you that. The fact that he could still be that aware and, uh, and trying to laugh and in the situation is encouraging to me. But, uh, I mean, there was just a pile of people there for him. And not that we can always see, you know, it's almost like Terry said, you know, Willard, y'all need to go, uh, not because she didn't want us, it's just that, you know, what you're going to do, just sit there and look at one another, go home and pray and do what you need to do and, 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 and continue going. But it really does matter. I remember when my son uh, uh, was in a coma and this church rallied around us. It was amazing. I mean, the, the strength that was there, you could feel it. Literally, I mean, I, I, I mean, there's times when, when that sort of prayer presence and that sort of friendship and that sort of folks just being there matter. So that's why the calls matter. That's why the cards matter. That's why the, the, just the outreach that, that we can do matters. And as I was reflecting on all of this and, and just preparing for today, this passage came to my heart along with several others that I'll share with you. But in Ecclesiastes... If you look with me, it says to chapter 4, verse 9, two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. Well, I say amen to that one. 
Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. And, and that, that is such a meaningful scripture to me. We, 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 it just highlights the importance that as humans, we are social beings. Now, I never have been a loner. i got five brothers. <laughs> I mean, I, I remember times when we were, those boys were getting ready to go on dates and all of that sort of stuff. They had four in the shower at the same time, and it was not a big shower. I mean, I'm serious. I mean, you know, and, and at our home... It was, it was where everybody hung out. Uh, they came in. My, my mother fed more people. And some of you have similar testimonies. So I grew up with a lot of people. I enjoy people. It's nice to be a people person. But not everybody's wired that way. But all of us need to understand that we are not alone. That I did it my way business and I am a rock and all of that sort of stuff that we've heard through the years and People sing and all of that is simply not true. He put us in a body. He created us as his body, and we need to work with each other. Now, there's some parts that are more vocal than others. If everybody talked as much as I did, nobody would get to talk. You know, and, but I've had some people that I had to breathe for. I, I, I could call a name or two, and some of you would say Amen. But some of my friends, they talk so much, I try to breathe for them. Slow down. It's okay, you know. We've all got that. But the fact that we are corporate people and need each other is a blessing. And especially when we understand that and cooperate with the Holy Spirit. So when you get a prompt, that's when you make the phone call. That's when now we've got it's a whole lot easier now. You can just text. You can call, you can, some of the other stuff, uh, Facebook, give me some other stuff, Instagram, what, huh? <laughs> write a card. <laughs> anyway, that, that, I mean, that, and it's almost overwhelming. So we got to be careful and not get wrapped up in all of that sort of stuff. But we, we need each other. And we have each other. And, and in Ecclesiastes, which is a, a sad story of a backslidden preacher. <laughs> I mean, it is. Then we, he understood through all of his trials and everything else that we need each other. And we do. Now, the good news is, is that we have each other. So if we give me the next scripture and let's, let's look at it. We'll look at it together. Solomon said this. Of course, he wrote Ecclesiastes and he wrote Proverbs or the Holy Spirit inspired him. But a friend loves at all times. So it doesn't matter what you're going through. If you are a friend, that's when you do it. It's the good times. It's the bad times. And a brother is, a born, is born for adversity. Now, what that simply means is you can have true friends, and, and they're like brothers. I mean, I've got people that I can call on that would help me every bit as much as any brother I've got. And my brothers help carry me through the, the, the roughest points in my life, literally. I mean, I, it, some of you know some of those stories, but I mean, well, you know, it's just wonderful that we have each other and, and that you can show friendship and that we can develop that. And so th th there's another one. If you bring up the other scripture. As iron sharpens iron. So a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Now you think, well, wait a minute. Now that iron sharpening iron business is pretty rough. But if you, I tell you, you, you if, if you're using a chainsaw, then you got to stop every now and then sharpen the blade. Or at least get you another blade or take it to somebody to sharpen it. And y'all have all heard the story of the old old man that went out with the young man. And the young man couldn't believe that the man was not still chopping wood through, through after a couple hours. He, he saw the man stopped and he'd stopped for a while. 
Well, he was sharpening the axe. And that young fella just kept right on. He was going to beat that old man. Well, the old man was smart enough to know that if you keep it sharp, you can cut a whole lot better than when you can keep it dull. I got an axe that bounces off of stuff. <laughs> so you have to just sharpen that thing. And that's what he put us here to do. Now, sometimes it can cause some friction. There have been some times when I've been challenged. There have been some times when I've been sharpened by a friend. But a friend loves, and a true friend it will speak into your life and let you know if there's something wrong. We've all got blind spots. And we all need a friend that can speak into our life even if it's unpleasant or things that we don't like to discuss. Even if it's something that you, that you can't see because it's a blind spot. But they can see. And, but you need to develop. You can't have that with everybody. Because, you know, the scripture says if you consider the wind, you never sow. If you wait for everything to get perfect, you, you know. But you need, you need to have some folks in your life that can speak to your life and you know that they love you, and that they can sharpen you. Now, there's the pleasant side of that is, is that you get a whole lot more done more effectively when you work together and when you help each other. And so that whole iron sharpens iron concept is a very good one because what it does is that it makes me better with other people. And I can take my gift and Colin's gift, and it's very different. Now, if you want an arm wrestling match, you don't want me. Now, you might want Colin, but you don't want, well, he said maybe a few years ago, but I think now you're stronger right now than I've ever been. <laughs> now, that is the truth. It ain't saying much either. But, uh, but I mean, we're different. I mean, you grab me and you grab Colin. Uh, it's right funny. Olivia will hug me. This is my granddaughter. She'll say, you're so soft. <laughs> and I'm thinking, <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, I, but it's okay. We're, we're different. I, you, you know, we, we can be who we are, but we need each other. And we can work together. And that whole concept of iron sharpening iron is extremely important. Now, some of you could tell me anything and criticize me, and I'd hear it and receive it. There are some people that could tell me anything and criticize me, and I don't pay one bit of attention to it. Not one bit. I mean, that's just uh, because you've you got to know who God's knit your heart with. And you need to have your heart knit with somebody. And actually, the more people, the better it is. And that's just something that, you know, iron, iron definitely Sharpens iron. Give me the next scripture. John said it this way. And the emphasis here is on fellowship with one another for this sermon. If we walk in the light as he is in the light. Now, that's what we need to do. Our, our life ought to be to reflect his image in us. Because all of humanity is made in his image, but not all of humanity walks in the light of his image or reflects it at all. Matter of fact, the overwhelming majority do not. And that's, not a, that, that's just a statement of truth, not a statement of judgment. Not a soul is going to stand before Willard and say, what you think? I, it, it, you know, God's the, the judge. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, now that's a calling. That's something that he equips us to be able to do. And as we bring our heart before him, he shows us how to do that. And as we, if we walk in the light as, as he is in the light, that's when we can fellowship with one another. See, I can see in everybody in this room some reason for us to be connected, some, something that brings us together. And the love of Jesus definitely is what should bring us together. The light of the Lord is what helps us with our fellowship. So as we fellowship with one another, and I put the scripture back up there, it says, the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us from all sin. Y'all, I need that. 
I need to be purified. Now, it's not because I uh, go after dirty things. It's that the world around you, listen, how, how many of you will go days without taking a bath? Please do not raise your hand. Um. You just you don't have to do anything to get dirty. You just exist. I mean, you walk outside and there's pollen, there's dust. I'll, I'll mow my yard, and, and honestly, I have to just about take a brush, y'all, before I walk in the house to get all the dust off of it. Uh, and and, and you, you, it, it's just inherent with living. And so we need the purification. We need the fellowship. As we fellowship with one another, his blood cleanses us from all sin. And then another passage out of of the Proverbs. Bring it up for me. A man who has friends must himself be friendly. Now that's New King James. King James says in order to have friends, you've got to show yourself friendly. And one of the things that that says, and and that's something that I appreciate about this church, and especially the seniors in this church. I'm telling you, Francis, Francis Hart will generally speak to everybody in the church every Sunday, and especially new people. And that's good. I mean, that, that, that's what we should do. If we have a guest here, they ought to say, well, I, I didn't know anybody, but they sure did speak. And we need to reach out. And we tend, and I tend to do it. We all tend to be comfortable with, with those that we know and love and, and that sort of thing. But what we need to do is reach out and show ourselves friendly. And, and, and just reach out to people. And not be phony. You don't have to be phony. And you don't have to, you know, even be a great conversationalist. All you can say is, we're glad you're here. And hope you'll come back. Now, we've got friends here from Pennsylvania. They probably won't be coming back. (laughs) But we're glad they're here and glad to see them. And I appreciate everybody that spoke to our guests here today. Uh, I don't live in Southport with my daughter and granddaughter and, and, and her dad. But Doodlebug is here. And she loves to come, and she loves to be in the nursery. <laughs> I had to pull her out of there just about. She loves to take care of youngins. But, but we need to be friendly. When you've got folks that are, that are new, we need to simply reach out to them. And so in order to have friends, you've got to show yourself friendly. Now, keep that scripture up there, Brian. All right, and you're doing a good job. A man who has friends must himself be friendly, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. I'm telling you there's a good, good double handful of people in this room that I know have got my back, that I know will help me, that I know would do anything within their power. Now, y'all, there's a lot that's not within our power. Everybody in here would take away some of the pain that Bill's going through right now. But we can pray, and we can reach out, and we can reach out for Terry and pray for Terry. Bless her heart, she sounded so tired. I mean, they'd been 24 hours in an emergency room. Went, to, one, went to, the, to New Hanover, and after 12 hours, checked in to see why a doctor hadn't seen them and they didn't even know they were there. I don't know how that happens. So, and I'm not being critical of the the healthcare system, but I'm telling you, we need to care for people. That's why I appreciate our nurses, because they reach out to people, and they realize that, that it's not just a paycheck that they're after, that it's to help people. And, and nationally, we're losing that. I mean, it's, it's not a local hospital hardly anymore. You know, and, and some of these regional centers are, are just that. But now I've been to Duke and seen them bend over backwards to help people. I've been to Chapel Hill and seen some of them bend over backwards to help people. And I've been in some to where it was just they were checking it off and sticking their head in the door so that they could put it on the insurance and, you know, all of that sort of stuff. But we need to be different 
And so we need to reach out and, and, and show ourselves friendly. And I'm telling you, one, one of the, things, one of the <clears throat> things that at least I see, and I may have a blind spot, but one of the things that I see in this ministry, y'all have, are just wonderful to me. And I want us to say that to anybody that visits. Now, everybody that visits doesn't belong here. God's the one who sets us where we need to be. But we will do well when we get visitors to reach out and to check on people and to, and to encourage them and just continue to do what we can do and then not carry that because if you do, you got a God complex. You can't fix people, but you can love them. And love never fails. Amen? Now, Go with me to <clears throat> John's Gospel. And Brian, if you pull that one up, we're going to be in chapter 15. And I do sometimes leave off the, 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 so you'll bring your Bibles and use them. But it's good to, it's good to have it. But the, the context of this set, setting, and I preach a lot out of it, is... Is the it's the Last Supper. It's, it's he's Judas is already on his way to get the mob to come and arrest him, and the Lord fully understands what's going on. I believe that the sin of the world is starting to be placed on him as he's sharing with the disciples. And in chapter fifteen, which I refer to as the Last Supper discourse, uh, beginning in verse nine, is where I want to pick it up. He said to the eleven. And to all of us, because this is recorded for all of us. As the Father has loved me, so I've loved you. That in itself is an amazing statement. That the love of Jesus equals the love that the Father has for his Son. He said, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. Now, it's easy for me to tell you. It's real easy for me to tell Doodlebug. Now, behave yourself. Do what your mama says. You know, do all the stuff. Everything's going to be all right. It's real easy for me to tell her that. But we need to figure out how do you do that? You know, how do you do that? Well, he told them to remain in his love. And that's a great thing. I can tell every one of you. Y'all remain in your love. Go in peace. Everything. But then he told them how to do it which I deeply appreciate. And he said, if you obey my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I've obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. So the key to walking and staying, remain means that's where you stay. The key to staying in his love is to simply do what he says to do. Now, I don't understand all of the commandments. I don't understand everything he says to do. So what I do is I do what I know to do and ask him to show me what I don't understand. And you keep on walking, knowing that you're not going to get it completely right, but don't use that as an excuse. As we understand his commandments, that's the key to us remaining in his love. That's why I preach the book. That's why I say the Word of God is what, is what you need to go to for life's instructions. And if you want to know what God says, open the book. Now, He'll speak to your heart. He, he, he'll quicken you. He, he will, and I don't, he has, I've heard Him say stuff in my spirit to me. And it's always a reflection of His Word. Sometimes... It's his word literally. And so what he said is, if we obey his commands, we will remain in his love just as he, just as I, he said, have obeyed my father's commands and remain in his love. And here's why he told us this. Now, he's, t- he's going on. He's, I'm telling you, he's speaking plainly to these guys. He, he, he goes on in, in verse 11. I've told you this. So that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. 
I think one translation says full. And he wants us to be full of joy. Now, that's got a practical application for that. Because the joy of the Lord is what? Our strength. It's why I can get up. It's why you can face overwhelming situations and continue to move. It's why I have been carried through overwhelming situations. How many of you can honestly say in your most difficult hours, you felt the Lord carry you? Now, I can say that. Look at this. Raise your hand again. I won't, I won't look around. That is a testimony to the faithfulness of God. And, and, and it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And he wants us to have, our, to have joy. He wants us not to yah yah and slap each other on the back, even though there's, there's a time for that too. I'm not talking about coarse jesting. I am talking about you just need to, I just need to understand I ain't as important as I think I am. And he'll remind me of that every now and then. And, and when I walked in, as bad as it was, Bill was covered in red rag. I mean, he was skint and hurting. And I walked in, and the first thing he did is crack a joke. And I thought, well, at, at least he's, he's, he is alert and alive and had not lost his sense of humor. Now, I, I ain't going to go try to joke with him a whole lot over the next few weeks. But... Uh, it's just a good thing that we can still have our joy and that's why we walk in his commands and we remain in his love and then his joy moves in us. And then in verse 12, my command is this, love each other as I've loved you. Love each other as I've loved you. Now, that is his command. He's, he's telling you, this. It, see, if you walk in this one, you've about got the rest of them covered. And, and so th this is exactly what, what he said. And then in verse 13, he tells us that greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. That's what he did. What a friend. Best friend I've got. As much as I love Terry, I love Jesus more than I love Terry. Much as I love every young and I got, and my granddaughter, I love Jesus more than I do every one of them. And the truth of the matter is, if that's true in our lives, then that's best for those that we love because His love never fails. His love knows no bounds. His love increases the love. That I, that's why he, we put him first. It's not because he's egotistical and selfish. It's because if we walk in his love, we have more love for those. We, I, I love Terry more because I love him the most than I would if I loved her the most. Now, don't ask me to say that again. But did y'all get that? Okay, I'm glad. I, I, I appreciate it. I'm glad. But it's true. And so what he wants us to do is to continue in his love and to very simply walk in his love. And then he goes on. <laughs> he said, you're my friends if you do what I command. Verse 15, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. What is his business? He went about doing good. He healed those who were oppressed of the enemy. He overcame death, hell, and the grave. And we can that is his business. And as we share his business, it's our business. It's your business. See? Said instead, I've called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I've made known to you. Now, verse 16, I'm glad he put it in here. You did not choose me. Now, we receive him. I understand that. But he chose us. He was messing with me. Y'all have heard me tell you that. I even asked him one time. I said, why are you messing with me? Now, uh, I don't know if y'all talk like that in 
uh, uh, in Pennsylvania, but we understand what messing with somebody means. He was messing with me. And, and he, he dealt with me. He called me. He drew me. And I can't, for the life of me, figure out why, except that he simply loves me. It sure ain't because I'm special. He said, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you. You've been chosen and appointed by God that you go and do what? Bear fruit. Go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. Fruit that remains. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. And then he closes this portion, or I'm closing this sermon, with verse 17. What does it say? What's his command? What a friend. What a friend. Died for us to give us eternal life. Kept me out of hell. Literally. Now you can not be uncomfortable talking about hell. I don't like it. Don't like to talk about it. But it's a real place. It wasn't created for humans, but there'll be a pile down there or up wherever it is. But what we need to understand is that we don't have a better friend. And aren't you glad that he lets us love each other and establish that kind of friendship? Because I need you. We need each other. And the wonderful thing is we've got each other. That's what's wonderful. And so what we need to do is uh, treat folks like we want to be treated. Reach out, be sensitive, show ourselves friendly, minister life. Are we going to miss it? Yeah. But you get up and keep on going. Amen? All right. Ah. As we get ready for the invitational hymn, and, and what is it? 134. We get ready for the invitational hymn. Don't hide behind the hymn book. <laughs> if you need prayer, I want you to come up. I'll pray with you about anything that's on your heart. The church doors are open. If you want to join our fellowship, and we've got some folks that have been talking to me about the possibility of coming, if now's the time, then come on. And join us. But if you've got any kind of need, anything on your heart. Now, I don't have to pray with you. That's the great news. You can bypass me and come straight to the altar and hold it to the Lord. You say, well, preacher, why have I got to come to the altar? You don't. You don't have to. But I'm telling you, there's something about publicly saying, Lord, I'm surrendering something to you today. And there's something about prayer here. I, I, I love to come in here and pray. I do. I love to come in here and pray. I usually am walking around when I'm praying. If I get too still, I'll go to sleep. So I wonder if I walk and pray with my eyes wide open. But if y'all got a prayer need, please come. If you want to join this fellowship, come on up. The church door's open. Standing as we sing. If you don't have the hymn, I'm not going to lead you in it. So go ahead. <laughs>